Um, this th deal right now in, in college football is, is the RPOs. And everybody says, okay, RPOs, yeah, this has been going on for a while. All right. <clears throat> Before, it, all the balls were thrown within five yards of the line of scrimmage, okay, in the RPO game. So uh, they were bubbles, okay, they were nows. Um, <clears throat> there might be three by one hitch, okay, maybe even an out cut, right? Well, now uh, in the college game this past year, and it really started to me, I think it started a couple of years ago uh, with the guys that, it, that we played against, the guys at Texas A&M, they started running what we call chop routes or inside fades with the number two guy. So the way they looked at it was is they were playing, that time I was at Alabama, <clears throat> they're playing Alabama, so they say, hey, uh, if these guys outnumber us in the box, okay, which one of the big things that we want to try to do is keep you from being able to run the football, right? Um, but, and if we could do it playing split safety coverage, great, okay, we're probably going to win. Uh, but if we can't, uh, and we have to play eight-man front or, or gap out, get more guys in the box there, then what A&M was doing was they said, hey, every time that they do that, we're, we're, we're going to have the run play call. I'm just going to say it's zone, zone left. So it's zone left, okay? So they see the look. We rode a single high. They threw the chop every time, inside fade. Uh, we were good enough to defend it that day, okay? But the point was for them, in my opinion, is if the look's the right way, if the look's the right way, so you got – you got whatever, six in the box or whatever, five in the box, we're going to hand the football off. If you're single high and you got one more in there that we can block, then we're going to take the shot down the field and we don't have to, we don't have to be right. Does that make sense? We don't have to call uh, a play-action shot down the field and hope that you're in this or that. So they just run play. And if it rolled to single high, middle field's closed, they threw the, they threw the nine or the inside fade. Uh, if, it, if it was split safety and it was, they had you outnumbered in the box, they handed the ball off. So um, the next thing to me is this year, um, there was a, there was a, it kind of took another step. And I thought the guys at Alabama, I thought Mike Loxley, done a really good job with this in the RPO game. When you watched Alabama play this past year, obviously we didn't know what the hell we were doing. They scored 58 points and could have scored 158. But watching them, um, their RPO game was a lot, was, was, became five-step glances, okay? So whether it was on the single receiver uh, or on, it could be two by two, whatever, the inside receiver, the combination of, uh, of, they still had the chops, they had the bubbles, they had the bubble slants, they had the sticks, they had the pops, but I'm talking about throwing the ball down the field. So this took the, this took the place of their quick game. So if, if, you, if you go back and have access to watch, you will see that there's lots of times that Tua's eyes were here, the, the back's on this side, He's here riding the ball, okay, but his eyes are over here, okay, and he's reading the, the, the overhang uh, defender on this side of the field, okay? So this was a new deal. Most everybody, when they, when they do that, right, they read the people on the play side, okay? No, he was reading it away from the ball, okay? So what they were doing was climbing because what do we do? When we, I'll show you this. When we're playing split safety coverage. <clears throat> to be able to stop the runs, you got to get an extra defender in the box, right? Okay, so everybody usually was starting to get their fit away from the back. Okay, try to get your fit away from the back. That, that was our number one rule. It's been that way for five or six years now. Okay, if we're going to play split safety coverage, fit comes away from the back. Well, what they were doing, instead of uh, letting, her, letting the, I'm the guard and the tackle, instead of us pushing, Okay, to a five technique to an overhang back or somebody's got to fold into the B gap or the end's going to slant inside. They were reading that guy, okay, and wasn't blocking him and running, running basically because now if you're going to do that and the guy folds in, because what does the overhang guy do? He reads what? He reads the tackle, right? 
So the tackle sitting here blocking zone, okay, the overhang guys, he's fit in the box, uh, and they're throwing balls right in behind the backers. They've done it all year long. Um, so the whole deal for us is finding out ways to play split safety coverage, and it's hard. Most everybody does it in three by one uh, when you're getting these RPOs. So that's one of the things I'm going to talk about today. Uh, stump for us. Um, is that, that don't show up on that. Is that a green dot showing up over there? Huh? It's not? All right. I got to get where I can coach on one of these things. Hey, Don, will you come up here and undo this right here? All right, so stump. All right, stump for us, okay? To me, I like to start on the weak side, okay? I like to start on the weak side. All right, the hardest thing for us uh, as a defensive coach, uh, when people have wide receivers that we cannot guard, okay, that, that changes. They just need one. If they got one wide receiver that we can't guard man-to-man, -man, all right, then we have to do something, okay? Uh, if we can guard them man-to-man, -man, then we're in good shape. Can you hit it back to the original thing there, Don? Um, so, all right, when we play stump, all right, I'm just talking about on the backside, the X, <coughs> This gives us a way uh, to double team this guy, okay? So we know that we're, we're, we can sit here and we call it cone, okay? Uh, but that, the corner knows that he can play outside, uh, and we're going to play him press, okay? Uh, he can play outside the X. When I say outside, uh, for us, when we're playing uh, press man-to-man, -man, inside and outside for us is eyeballs, okay? It's eyeballs. All right, so if coach here is, is, is the wide receiver, okay, I'm, I'm right down the middle of him. We're eyeball to eyeball. If the ball's inside and I want to move outside, I'm just going to move this far. This is outside to me, okay? If I'm going to move inside, this is inside, all right? Because all you offensive guys know uh, that when <clears throat> they're coaching guys to release, uh, all they're looking for is space, okay? All they're looking for is space. And the easiest way to teach it is we all have doors in, the, in, the, in our uh, coach's offices. So, I mean, I, I can just sit here and look at this door right here, and this is the perfect example. So uh, if I want to go through this door right here, all right, there's no space. Sucker's not open. Uh, but if you look at this door right here, uh, and this is what defenders do, corners do all the time, uh, they get to doing what? They, they're here, and the guy moves, and they jump back. They give them space. All right. They don't stay square, so now they got place to, to release on. So one of the first things we're talking about is, uh, is we want to get up there uh, and, and be an eyeball outside, knowing that I got help inside. Our rule is this, if for the corner, if, you, if he releases outside, he's yours, okay? And my rule is, if he releases outside and he's not in the bleachers, you're fired, okay? It's that simple. It's that simple, okay? Uh, because the first thing this safety is going to do when this guy releases outside, he's not going to double him anymore, okay? So I would think like this, right? I, I'm 44 years old. I got my slacks on and, and, and whatever kind of shoes I got right here. Uh, but if you told me if this guy releases inside and I'm going to get a double, right? I can go do that right now today. I don't even have to warm up. I don't care who the guy is. Okay, if he goes outside, I'm going to set on my technique. I'm going to put him in the bleachers. If he goes inside, I'm fixing to get doubled right there, okay? So how many times does a guy inside release uh, and run a nine route? It happens. Not much, okay? Not much, but it will happen. So this guy, I mean, this right here is like stealing. He's not even earning his scholarship, okay? So... What we're doing here, when, we, when we're in three by one uh, and we're playing this, this coverage, instead of getting our fit away from the back, okay, excuse me, I'm telling you a lie, uh, we're still going to get our fit away from the back, but it's going to come from um, this defender here, okay? So we're going to kick our backers uh, to the back. When we play split safety coverage, all right, our, our backers kick to the back. So this guy's not in the fit. So how many times... There, one of the RPOs people are doing, Mike Bobo was doing this 10 years ago, uh, is he's running uh, moon sweep or whatever, pulling buck sweep, whatever you want to call it, and he's reading this backer right here. 
and they're running a slant right here. Uh, we've done it against Georgia Tech uh, in 2014 and, and actually threw a pick uh, because Georgia Tech was playing split safety coverage and the quarterback threw it right to this guy. He's supposed to come off of it uh, in split safety coverage. Does that make sense? Okay. If this guy can get it. All right. So <clears throat> now I'm going to start. We're just on the weak side. So right now, free safety, okay, he's out of the fit. He's extra, okay? All he is is extra. All right, so the back's there. He knows that. Um, we're doubling here, okay? All right, the Mac backer, all right, he's got this guy man-to-man. -man. If he stays on this side of the ball, he's got him man-to-man -man if he stays on this side of the ball. So anytime we, we play split safety coverage, we just take a line, and if you just draw it from the, the head of the football straight down the field, Okay, all right. that's what we're saying, split safety. We're playing uh, each half of the field, okay? It's, it, it's three on two and it's four on three. All right, now, um, I like to start with the backers because they work together. So our money backer, and it can be your mic backer, money backer, whatever, okay? Um, our money backer, all right, he is what we call a poster. All right, so the first thing he's got to know if we're going to play split safety coverage is where's the back. Okay, because the back controls how we play it. All right, so the back is what we call split right now. All right, so that means he's on the weak side. He's split. Now, that don't mean he can't come across the formation, okay? But right now, he's a line split. So these two guys work together. So if this back stays on this side, uh, he knows he's got him, and he knows he's the poster, and he is the wall, the, the, basically the wall of the entire defense, okay? So nothing is going to come underneath him. Okay, anything that comes underneath him, he's taking it back. All right, now, so <clears throat> when we say post, we say you're going to post a guy at five to seven yards, put your dick in his hip, okay, all right, and, and make him go over the top of you. If he goes over the top of you, you're done with him. You don't have him. You're a zoner, okay? The only thing that can happen is this number two receiver, can come back. So everybody runs like drive route. He runs dig. This guy comes under right now. Split flow, right? Well, he's got to take first inside out of two and three. That's the poster. That's his rule. Well, we all know when they run this route, what does two do? He gets close to three, right? They always do that. Two gets close to three. You know the route's coming before it's coming. You know, you just play the play, right? Um, so, but he's got to understand that, okay? He's the poster. That, that's his rule. He has no carry, no carry. So again, okay, when you just talk about being efficient, uh, I'm sitting there, I know I'm in the fit, here I am, I'm playing linebacker, uh, I can feel, I can feel run pass, all right, so I'm going to go action uh, to coverage, okay, uh, that's the way we coach it, action to coverage. So we get this, all right, so they stick the ball here, boom, all right, this guy's pulling, all right, we, our coverage is here, so we go action to coverage. So uh, one of the hard routes people do is, is they'll run this guy down the middle of the field, pull the guards, and it's pass all the way, right? It's one guard play pass. Well, they're probably not running the football if the tight end's releasing down the field, right? Uh, if you're in the field, if the back's on the other side. Now, they could do it if the back was on this side, probably. People run pop passes. But we go action to coverage, and we teach it that way because later on in this deal, we'll show you some things that we do where we do ask this guy to take this guy down the field. But right now, we don't. He has no pressure. He's got the easiest job in the world, okay? He's the poster. I got first inside out of two and three, okay? All right, now, <clears throat> I just like as we're talking this through, okay, because I really think this is easy if you understand the concepts uh, with the two backers, okay? So I just told you if this, if this back stays on this side, the, Mac, the Mac's got him, right? Well, what if he's, he goes across the formation? Well, if he goes across the formation fast, okay, well, it don't make sense for the Mac to chase him, right? Okay, so we just call it a 3-4 push, okay? So now the Mac becomes the poster and the money takes the back through. That's what we do, okay? Um, so they're working hand in hand together. All right, now, now I'm going to go to the safety here. So you see the safety, it says read three, three to two. All right, we tell the guy, this is your rule. If the tight end's attached, if the tight end's attached, you're going to line up 10 and two, 10 yards deep, two yards outside. Okay? If he's detached, 
okay? He's not, a, he's not in the core. And then we're going to tell you to line up uh, 10, 10, 10 and 0, okay? I want you to be head up the guy if the guy's flexed out. Um, the reason for that is um, if, if he's vertical, you got him, right? Okay? Well, most of the time when he's in the core, we're playing with a six technique. We've got somebody up there that's impeding his release. So if he's going to go vertical, what's he going to do? He's going to release. He's going to get away from these guys so he can go vertical, right? So um, we'll line up 10 and 2 there. But if he, once he's flexed out, uh, we're going to go ahead and line up head up on him so we got good position on him. The rule is this. If he's, over the, if he's over the money backer, he's over the money backer, he's yours. Okay, so what's our alignment? Uh, or our stance, we put our inside foot up, okay? I, I'm, I'm a big believer in seeing the big picture. I can sit here and, 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 and see the quarterback, and I can feel I'm going to transfer my eyes. Uh, I, I can feel what this guy's doing, so I'm just going to clear my cleats, okay? I don't want to come back pedaling out there fast. I, I'm going to let him take the slack out of the route. Now, as we all know, we all know, uh, ever who's at number three changes the plays, right? Okay, so um, you got um, there's some tight ends that run like offensive tackles. Okay, and then you got some tight ends that are like dude that pay, plays for the Patriots, Gronk. Okay, you know the difference, right? And there's not a rule, there's not a rule, right, that the tight end can't go line up at number two and the best wide receiver line up at number three. Makes sense? All right, when all this happens, uh, these offensive guys – I mean, they love to do all this stuff. I mean, it's really, you, you, you know the plays, okay? Because when they do that, their plays change, right? So um, when people, so you got to know, who's, where's the people at? All right, the next thing for me I teach these guys is, is who's on the ball? Who's on the ball? Because ever who's on the ball and who's off the ball lots of times changes the plays. Uh, I mean, it drives me crazy. Um, last year I'm sitting there and, I know the plays before they, before we even do them, just based off who's on and who's off. I'm like, do you not think the other team watches tape? But anyhow, uh, so that's one thing that we do. All right, so if three is not vertical, three is not vertical right now, all right, I'm going to double to two. Three is not vertical, I'm doubling to two. Okay, all right. Right there. So I'm here. He's not vertical. So if he, if he skips, this is one that a lot of people skip and stall and all that. I promise you he's not going vertical if he skips and stalls. If he's going vertical, he's going vertical right now. He's not vertical. Boom, we're going to two right now. Okay. All right now, the star, okay, or Sam, whatever you want to call him. All right. We play this coverage with our linebackers and our nickels, okay, all right. because we think it's easy. All right. <clears throat> You line up six and one, okay, six yards off, one yard outside, okay? And the wider the guy gets, you might head the guy up, right? All right but you're the flat player, okay? You're the flat player. All right, now, you don't have to take nobody back. You are the flat player, okay? And we play it because our corner is off. We will play it with smash rule, okay? So <clears throat> there's one route, all right, that's a bitch on this, okay? All right, we tell the guy, all right, you're the flat player unless number one, number two, and number three go vertical. If one, two, and three go vertical, we're going to ask the guy to carry number two. So he can see if two and three are going vertical, right, but he can't see if one goes vertical. All right, so, he, he, so Who's got to let him know? The corner's got to let him know, right? And we say, we say smash is what we say. Um, so um, if we knew people were running this, if they ran three or verticals uh, out of three by one, okay, this wouldn't, be, this wouldn't be one of the coverages we play, okay? And that's one of the things that we do is we have a bunch of different ways that we play three by one coverages. And <clears throat> we say, Okay, if they're doing this, then we want to play this. If they're doing this, we want to play that. Now, but this is the first coverage we're going to put in from day one when it comes to split safety coverage because we think this is the best way to play the runs and the RPOs. The corner, okay, the corner. He's sitting there. 
uh, we tell him, I tell him get two and eight. All right, two yards inside, eight yards deep, uh, depending on the divider. Um, if, the, if the guy gets a short split, then obviously you don't get inside. Uh, but he's playing an inside one-third. That means he's got all the number one man-to-man -man unless he's short. All the number one man-to-man -man unless he's short. If he's short, smash and go play the divider. Okay, that's the rule. All right, the reason we play in, um, inside, we call it inside one-third, okay, is because <clears throat> three's vertical at 10 yards, 12 yards, sets down. Who's got him? The safety does, right? Okay, as soon as they know you're playing quarters, they're going to run some kind of quarters beaters, right? They're going to try to eat up the safety and run number one on a post. Inside one-third, take it away. Um, now... This is obviously at, at, uh, this is at Tennessee, okay, and we didn't do much anything right, so we'll see what's on here. Uh, the first thing I can see is I'm going to go on the weak side over here. Uh, so right there, they're playing cone. So if the guy releases outside, he's supposed to put him in the bleachers because he's got a double right here. As soon as this guy outside releases, this guy should be poaching right now, okay? So one of the first things right here, all right, who's number three? Okay, who's number three? We see this backer right here. He's got the back. Who's number three? Uh, he's off the ball. Well, he's off the ball. I think he's off the ball. Now, I wouldn't think that he's going vertical. Okay, uh, most of the time when they want threes to go vertical, his butt's on the ball. Okay, if you, if you watch it, he is on the ball. Uh, how many times in, in college football right now, uh, the whole deal in 11 personnel is you have why on the ball, why off the ball, and four open, right? And they use the same guy to do it. If you got a guy that can do it, <clears throat> it creates some issues, right? But, you know, the first thing I'm looking for, okay, why off? How many times does a tight end go vertical when why is off? It's zero with everybody, okay? There might be one in, in 500 snaps that the why goes vertical when he's off the ball. Okay, if they want his ass to go vertical, where's he at? He's on the ball, just cheats a step, right? I don't know why, but that's, that's the way it is. So if you just watch them, you can see uh, what you're getting now. So the first guy right here, the poster, the inside backer right here. All right, there's no reason to go jumping out there. He should tell right now by that guy's release, the way he tempos off the ball, the third receiver, he's not going vertical, okay? Just common sense, right? He's not going vertical. So he should slide uh, and put his dick in his hip right now. Uh, and he shouldn't give the guy the space because you can see right now he's, he's the, the backstop of the defense right there. He's done let this guy inside of him, but he knows he has to take him back. Okay? Now, this, this star down here at the bottom, okay? And, and, hey, let me tell you, I coach the DBs, okay? So I'm not talking about nobody but myself. All right, so I just gave y'all the rule, right? Okay, all right, so this star right here, he's got the what? Flats, good, I got one person here paying attention. All right, all right, got the flats, all right. Um, I'm gonna have to get on Coach Hatcher. He kept that hospitality room open too late last night. Uh, all right, so we got, he's got the flats, right? Unless what? One, two, and three go where? Go vertical, right? So right now, his eyes are inside. Is three going vertical? No, he ain't going vertical. And he should know as soon as the ball's turned over, the tempo of the guy coming off the ball. All right, if he's going to go vertical, he's going to be hauling ass right now. The guy's slow off the ball, right? I don't know why these receivers do that, but they do. They tell you what they're going to do before they do it. Okay? So he should know right now he's got the flats. All right? He's acting like the guy's going vertical, so we should have a flat player right now. All right? And then the safety... As soon as he, the safety does a good job, guy's not vertical, he's letting a slack. Only thing I'd say, the safety's too wide right here. It's one of the things, okay, I don't know why, but just like I just told y'all, okay, when we play anything, when we play stump, uh, if the tight end's attached or in the core, we're 10 and 2, right? If he's displaced, we're going to be 10 0. That means we're going to be 10 and head up, and that safety's not. All right? And I guarantee you, he's back. All right, and the first day we go out there this spring, we'll go through the same meeting just like I'm talking to y'all. And the first time we go out there and, and number three is opened up, he'll be 10 and 2 just like he is right there. I don't know why, all right, but has a hard time. 
he is playing the correct technique. Now, the safety at the bottom, okay, all right, so his rule is to be two and eight, okay? So y'all can, y'all can see that right now. If there's a post right there, Fig, he's fixing to get what? Beat, right? He's back, back pedaling outside, not inside, squatting his feet. So, All right, so this one's on here, right? So, okay, I want to put this one on here as a, as a teaching deal, okay? So when y'all saw when it was three by one, all right, we said we played cone over there, right? So we're doubling the X, all right? And the backer over there has the back. Well, let's just use a little common sense here, right? Okay, so now <clears throat> the X cuts his split in. Okay, why are they cutting their split in, right? Okay, either to run across the field right now, okay, or uh, to run some kind of high-low uh, where they can stem in, rub the backer, okay, uh, run a corner route, uh, something there, right? That's what they do when they move him in, okay? So we see, see him moved in. Well, we have a call that we call Connie, okay? Connie, all right? And if I was an inside linebacker, all right, that would be the first call I ever learned if I was going to play a guy man-to-man, -man, okay? Because Connie protects the inside linebacker, okay? So what is Connie? Connie means I have the back, okay, unless the X comes inside and is short, okay? If you make a Connie call, the corner is going to get off about four to five yards. We're not going to stay up here on him. Okay, because he has got to be able to see if the, if the X goes inside and short, he knows that he now has the back. Okay, all right. If the X goes inside and vertical, then we still, we still have a cone on the vertical guy. And that's the hard part about it. Not for the DBs, for the linebacker. Okay, so the route I'm talking about is if I'm the X right here and I'm going to say the ball's in there. Uh, and he stems in like he's going to run a sit route in the back flares, but he don't. He stems in, uh, then goes vertical and runs a corner route, and the back still shoots to the flat. We make our inside linebacker read that with a corner. He has to take the back through. But we know because that's the reason we call it Connie, because if the guy ends up vertical, it still turns into cone. Okay, We know that if that guy stems in like that and gets vertical, we're doubling the vertical guy, but because that corner's a little bit soft and he got off to where he could see it, we kind of have insurance in case the backer gets beat on the wheel. I don't know if y'all get me on that. All right, so here we are. It's his first game of the year. It's how good a coach I am. All right, so you can see, all right, the X is what? X is short, right? X is short, okay? I'm probably over here on the sideline about to blow a gasket because I know what's coming. Connie, right? I mean, we've worked at all camp. Our offense done this route, all camp, right? So first thing I'm thinking, if I'm an inside linebacker, the first thing I do, if I'm playing a guy man-to-man, -man, I'm going to look and see where everybody else is at. Just common sense football, right? I probably tells you what the plays are. Where's the location of the back? I don't know if that back looks like he's damn near outside the tackle right there. I don't know how many run plays they got like that, but I'd say probably none. All right? And if you go back and look at this team's breakdown for the year, most of the time when they were four open, it was about 90% pass. Well, they're four open, right? So I'll be sitting here telling these DBs, Connie, 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 which the DBs should be saying it, right? Okay? All right. <clears throat> but that, that one, that corner up there, hadn't ever played corner in his life. He played quarterback at uh, one of them small schools in Middle Tennessee. This is his first college football game. So he was just proud that he was lined up on the right side of the ball. So he wasn't thinking about no Connie. And that dude at his garden right there caught 18 touchdowns a year before. So he wasn't thinking about it. But this is why this is on here. So let's look how, how simple this is. So first of all, if we made a Connie call, the corner uh, is supposed to get four to five yards off uh, so we can see it, right? Okay, so y'all tell me if he's four to five yards off, okay, is the X short inside? Yeah. Uh, so he would take the who? He would take the back. Uh, the linebacker takes this guy, and guess what? We still got a high guy. Still got a high guy, all right? So what does that mean? He could actually poach if we needed to. 
I, but, you know, I don't know. This should have been a 75-yard touchdown. All because of just lack of being able to communicate and apply simple principles. But I just want to, I want to put this on here so you can see it. It's really not that hard. You look on the other side, okay, so right here. Another thing is, is this route right here. So <clears throat> this is one route that's hard to guard when we play stump, okay, uh, is when two and three are both outside. If you remember that money backer I said was a poster, okay? He's a poster, so he's got first inside. Well, there's nobody inside. Everybody's going where? Everybody's going outside. All right, so when we get guys, okay, when we get guys that um, understand, okay, all right, how to play, hey, I know I'm the poster, okay, I know I got, I got uh, first inside out of two and three, okay, but where, we, where I want to get this poster where he understands is I go post this guy, I'm seeing what number two's doing. Not number three. I got three, right? I'm, I'm based off how I go junction the guy. I got him, okay? I want to be able to see number two because I know if two's outside, what I got to do? I guarantee where's three going? Outside. Two's going outside because must protect, right? They're trying to beat the route versus, versus stump or stubby. That means three's going outside. So I'm going to have to push into this guy, all right? Stand up, Jake, all right? He played Mike Linebacker for me at Georgia, and we had the sixth best defense in the entire country, okay? All right. So I promise you the reason we could do that is because his ass knew how to play this stuff. All right. It wasn't because he was dadgum some kind of guy that knocked the hell out of everybody ever snap. All right. But he knew how to play football, okay? All right. And he was about that big when he played for us, all right? But you learn how to play, and if you get guys who can play the right way, Okay, it's amazing what you can get done, but that's one of the things we do. So right now, I'm thinking this linebacker right here actually done a decent job pushing into the guy, push into him, push in, keep carrying him, because look, he's outside. He's, first of all, I don't know, y'all tell me, look at this split. What do you think they're about to do? You think, you think two's fixing to run a, the drive route? Hell no, okay? If they was going to run the drive route, they'd be three yards from each other. It's common sense, right? All right, you just got to look the formations for the ball snap. So, anyhow, all right. Okay, so we're playing stump up top. I, I hate what, whoever this linebacker is right here. He's too high. All right, look, right now, he's too high. He, his pad level's too high. He should be junction that guy. Now, one thing that they did up top, which is good, what did the corner say to the flat defender? He said, smash right now, smash. So he, this is good. He's playing the flats. We're in good position. All right. This guy's got a junction and put into this guy, push into this guy on the back side. I can tell you right now, oh, Lord, have mercy. All right. Look how wide. Y'all just heard me say an eyeball, right? Look at this guy. All right. He's about six yards outside, okay? So I don't know who he's going to defend. I saw things this year that I never thought I'd see coaching ball. I didn't see it at, at Plainview High School nor Fort Payne High School, but I saw it at the University of Tennessee. Mm. So, but anyhow, I, one thing he wasn't going to do is let them beat him outside, I can assure you that. All right, but this is a good, like, this safety right here, when the guy outside released, he, he, he started poaching back, so you can see that there. All right. Now, we like to play this in the red area, okay? We like to play this in the red area, um, and we like to play it like if, if we were playing against uh, Georgia when Jim was at Georgia, Jim would take, he takes uh, regular people, okay? I'm saying tight end. He, he, they didn't play with fullbacks at Georgia, but two tight ends, right? Uh, and two wide receivers, and he creates open formations. So you got a Sam linebacker that you've recruited right there to do what? Uh, play the zones, play the stretch. When they run the power, close on the power. He damn didn't recruit his ass to go out here, okay, and play this right here. But if they open up the formations, he's got to go out there, right? Well, I mean, you, you watched Georgia last year that they get in this formation, okay? This is, this is uh, 
Nada. All right, this is Charlie Warner over here at the X. All right, and here's Miko and Terry right here. And here's your Sam linebacker. So you see what I'm saying? Just matchup parts. You got to be able to. You got to be able to play something, right? You damn sure ain't gonna get your Sam back or go out there and play man to man. All right, and if you and if you say okay, well, as soon as they open up and and get four open people, okay, well, we're just going to go to middle field coverage. Well, good luck with that, okay? The quarterback they got will throw it right where it's supposed to be every time. You got to be able to defend a little bit and play some different stuff. <clears throat> so these guys down here made a Connie call. You see the guys getting off right there? Closed. All right, so here they are. Now, again, like to me, all right, you see this guy right here. He's going to post this guy. He's way too deep, right? Okay, so the first thing to know that three that they're running the drive routes, what? Three's on the what? On the freaking ball. Okay, so you should look and know what the heck's going. He's going vertical because he's on the ball, right? I mean, just the way they do, okay? So this guy's fixing to be short inside. He should be, he should, as soon as he goes to post this guy and this guy comes inside, all right, right now, uh, he should be matching him, okay? So one thing I want to talk to you about when we do this. <clears throat> so let's say they just run this route right here, okay? Just like they did. Three's vertical, two's inside, right? So two comes inside. Linebacker's got him, right? Okay? Well, he sticks it in the ground and whips out, whips away from the backer. The linebacker's got to take him. He's, he's got him short inside. He's got to take him. Okay, uh, because we're nailing down with the safety if they run the dig in behind it. Okay, we're nailing down the safety. So, uh, plus, if he don't, they could have number one could be out there running a hitch, and the corner could be making a smash call, and you wouldn't have any help outside. All right, so these are some old ones. These are this is real old. Hell, that's Benny Sinceri. All right. But you can see right here, this is good. This is, this is cone, uh, close to the back, first inside, safety nailed down. That's the drive route that I'm talking about. A uh, little better body position by the corner up top. Okay, Stubby. Now, Stubby, uh, this is Nick's favorite, okay? Nick wants to play Stubby. He don't want to play Stump, okay? And the reason is uh, when we were at Alabama, our corners played so much press coverage, uh, he felt like they screwed things up when they played off coverage. I mean, that's backwards, right? Okay, in my opinion. Uh, but, but it's probably right because we played so many things like this at corner, okay? Uh, he felt like when we played off, uh, they had messed things up, so he liked to play stubby to be a little tighter, okay? Uh, and if you're coaching them corners, I don't mind it either, okay? Uh, but the only difference, on the weak side, stubby and stump are the same, exactly the same. No, everything's the same here, okay? All right, for the, for the money backer, same, you're the poster, okay? All right, where it changes for the safety, safety's the same, three to two. It changes these two guys, okay? So the field corner is going to play press, and he's got all of number one, all of number one. Okay, all right, the, the star, the Sam, we do not do this with linebackers. We only do, it with, only do it when we're playing with five DBs, okay? All right, so um, we tell the star, okay, all right, you got all of number two. You're six and, six and one, all right, you got all number two, okay, unless three comes to the flat. If three comes to the flat, you got three, okay? All right, so you got all the number two unless three comes to the flat or, here's the or, or two goes underneath right now. So they run the drive route, right? You don't take the drive back, all right? So <clears throat> that's the rules, okay? Now, what's the weakness of the defense, okay? I, I can tell you right now, these last two things that I've just showed you, if we were playing Coach Spurrier, uh, he would kill, uh, and he'd run what we call the happy route. He'd take number three, uh, and he'd, run, he'd be in split. He'd take number three and run him right underneath this Sam backer right now. He'd take number two, uh, and he'd go stem right here at this outside guy to try to get him to do what? 
widen and he'd stick his foot in the ground and drive it right there and he'd throw him the ball right there. Okay, now the safety's supposed to nail down, you ain't going to deny the ball. That'd be the first thing he did. All right? And he would do it until you got out of it. Okay, all right. The next thing he would do is he'd run verticals, right? Because he knows the weakness of this defense is uh, either one of them, three's vertical, the safety's got him. One's vertical, the corner's got him. Two's vertical, I got all this room to run vertical and throw it, throw him open. That's the two routes. That's the weakness of the defense, right? So people that are running these routes, all right, we're a little bit hesitant about, about playing this coverage, right? So we'll get into some things that we play, but this is where we start, okay? Uh, and you got to be able to play it some. Sometimes, hey, <clears throat> you just got to know your weaknesses, all right? And I'm going to tell you this. When I coach my guys, all right, that's what I'm telling them in this defense, okay? All right, what's the weakness of our defense? Here it is, okay? All right, for the star, all right, it's going to be the happy route, okay? And it's going to be verticals. All right, for the corner, all right, it's going to be something eating up the safety with a post route. You guys on the backside, you're all there stealing, okay? All right, you ought to pay back half your dad gum. Uh, check you get a month, all right, doubling somebody, all right, but that's the way, that's the way it goes, so you can see this right here, you can notice there's probably not a lot of stubby with us, because I didn't trust our corners yet this year, <clears throat> if you look on the weak side, no problem, got them double, you can see Haha -ha actually starts to poach, uh, and then the guy comes back inside on the guy, he goes back to him, uh, it's a good, it's a good, uh, it's a good post, a little bit, I think the, the guy's drifting some, all right? But right here, you can see right now, they're trying to run verticals right there. You got to be able to hold up at number one, too, out to the field. I mean, you're playing press man with a four-man rush, all right? And they can seven-man protect. I don't know. Sometimes I don't want to get in that deal. All right, but right here, here we go. So we're playing stubby, right? So this linebacker is going to do what? He's going to post him, right? Well, he goes out. Why does he not push into him? Okay, because, because number two is not what? Two's not out. Two's vertical, and he sees it, okay? So this is like, we're, we're, this is getting like into the, graduating into the ninth and tenth grade here, okay? So he's not pushing into this guy because, all right, Two's not out. He knows to stack back. He knows this is his guy right there. All right, if you can play it like this, all right, you don't eat the safety up so much. But you can see, all right, where's the place to go with the ball? All right, right there. there. Ain't no place over here to go with the ball unless you win one-on-one. -on -one, okay, and you got to work some kind of combinations. And trust me, there's guys out there that know the combination routes right, that beat this stuff. Okay, so here we go. Lord have mercy. I don't know if I had this guy. This blows my mind. All right, I love to look this, okay? You got this guy man-to-man. -man. First of all, all right, he's six yards from the quarterback, and it's like we got a delay mechanism. I'm not going to guard my guy. I'm going to help you out a little bit right here that's getting doubled. Again, here we go right now. All right, you can see two's where, two's outside. The guy's got to push into the guy. Push into the guy. Just using your eyes. Where they're supposed to be body angles. Okay, you, right now you know what, look to split a two and three. I guarantee he's doing what? Two's coming underneath, it's coming underneath. Just, I mean, it's like so easy, okay? So right now for the star, we're coaching him up. You got all the two, right? All right, so if three comes to the flat, you're the flat player, okay? If two goes under, you're the flat player. Two goes under, he's the flat player, right there. That's all it is. Now, What's the route that we try to help him on, okay, is um, two under, one under, and three on a corner route. We tell our star to help the safety on that route. We call it Buffalo 7, and you can see he's looking for it right here. Two's under, he's looking for this guy to run a 7, he don't, so he just comes off of it. Okay, I... This one's on here so everybody can see, all right, a 3-4 push, okay? Remember I said the two linebackers are tied together, okay? So if the back line's up here or boats there, whatever he does, all right, these two guys handle it. We do not want the, safe, the star to be involved in this, all right? So this is a 3-4 push. So now he becomes a poster, he takes him, uh, and we're just playing what we're playing here. Remember what I said, the star's got what? He got all the two unless three comes to the flat or two goes under, so we got him doubled right here. So you look at it right here, 
You got a double here. You got a double here. All right. That, that one's easy. This one's easy. All right. If you're going to take number one and run short routes, you're going to get killed versus Alabama. Okay? All right. Because you got to throw the ball over their head. Okay. Now, this one right here, guys, we, this is big alternative. Kirby's going to play it. We're going to play it. Will's going to play it at South Carolina. Todd plays it at Florida. All right. And they're all probably, they, they wouldn't ever come to a clinic and talk about this. All right. But they think they all invented it, I guess. But we all stole it from somebody, right? Everybody, it's what we do. We steal our stuff, okay? All right, so clip, okay? Clip is a way. Remember, stubby and stump, the corner to the field's playing what? By itself, right? All right, now we got a chance to flip it and roll up on the guy to the field, okay? And still get the backside guy what? Doubled, all right? We play this one as much as we play the other ones, okay? All right, so clip. On the back side of three by one is still the same. Okay, we're playing Cone or Connie back over there based off the split of the X. Cone or Connie. All right. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, we're doubling this guy. Max got that guy. All right, now, to the field. I'm going to start to the corner, the field corner. Okay. He's going to play what we call cut technique. Okay. Uh, when we play cover two, we coach our corners to play outside in cover two, okay? Why? Because we don't carry, right? We don't carry, so we want to force everything inside out, or excuse me, outside in to the safety. In cut, we're carrying two and three. We're carrying them, all right? So now the safety is going to play a little bit what? Wider off the hash. Does that make sense? Okay, because we're carrying the inside guys. So the corner is a support guy, so he's going to come down inside and he's going to play cut from inside out on the number one receiver. Okay, until the guy got too tight a split that he couldn't do it, right? Okay, and we'll go through this while we do this. Now, the star, okay, star, you play cut on number two. This is how we coach it. This is a verbiage right here. Play cut on number two. Coach, what is cut? You have your guy up the field and back toward the ball. That's it. Up the field. We all know what up the field is. And back toward the ball. He's yours. Okay, I got that. What if he goes out? If he goes out, go to number one. That's it. That's how we play cut. It's that simple. Coach, what I got? Money backer. You got cut on number three. What does that mean? You got him up the field and back toward the ball. If he goes out, go to number one. Okay, go to number one. Safety, okay? So we teach our safeties when we play cover two, which is not what we're playing here. I just want to go back. When we teach our safeties to play cover two, we tell them the divider's two yards outside the hash, okay? We play cover two, never get more than two yards outside the hash. When we play cut, when we play cut, because we are carrying the two and three verticals, okay, we tell them that they can get four yards outside the divider. So that's six yards outside the hash. Okay, so they're going to get a little wider. Because obviously we're not carrying who? We're not carrying number one, right? So we tell the corner that he, on passes, he has to rerun pass. He wants to kick slide back into number one, uh, forcing him inside out. Uh, but we want him to keep this guy kind of cut off up to 14 yards unless somebody comes to the flat. All right? And we tell the safety, once number one gets over 14 yards, you got to be able to play him. Okay? Now your eyes are at the quarterback, but you got to have range to do it. All right? Now, all these routes that beat Stubby and Stump aren't any good versus Clip. So this is how this starts going together right here. Okay? All right? So they're not any good versus Clip. All right? So... <clears throat> Let's look at it right here. Oh, crap. We got one from Knoxville. All right. Here we go. All right, so we got Cone up top. Go get the guy. Boom. Okay, so now here we go. All right. Now, this is, this is good. You can see we're bringing three up the field. We're bringing two back right now. All right. Our offense, okay, is running three guys back inside. Okay, when people are running three guys back inside and number one is vertical, okay, clip is not a great call. Okay, it's not a great call. This was the only route that we ran, that our offense ran, that gave us problems in clip. Okay, 
but it was so good and took all the rest of them away. Hell, if y'all get it right, y'all get it right. You know, if y'all can figure out what we're doing, then good for y'all. Okay? All right? So we wanted, we wanted to make sure, okay, that we ran it. So you can see right now, you can see what you're getting at. You take it from inside out. There's nowhere to go with the ball here if you'd play the right technique. There's nowhere to go with the ball there. All right? Now... If this guy, normally when people run this route, they don't run dig with it, okay? Now, the reason they're doing it is because I told them to do it, okay? All right, because I knew Georgia, Alabama, and, and Florida, and South Carolina played this coverage, so I wanted to have an answer because I knew as soon as they looked at our routes last year, they were going to say we're in three by one. We're playing clip. I knew that. So I wanted to be able to run something. Well, even though I knew it would be good against our defense, but you got to be fair, right? I guess. All right, here we go. All right, right here. We're playing clip. All right, so <clears throat> I don't know why this corner is bailing at the bottom. I have no idea. But anyhow, he shouldn't be. They're playing cone over here. Uh, you can see the money backers taking three down the middle of the field. Okay, all right. We're bringing them back. Okay, look, the corner up top. All right, this is the final five, guys. All right. Remember when I said if we can guard them if everybody comes back, unless one goes vertical down the field, we, he'll be uncovered, right, if he comes back. Most everybody, when they're running these routes, they take what? They take them back quick game, right? Remember the game, there's not much drop back anymore. All right, so the corner's taking what we call the final five. That's why he lines up inside. So he's got to bring the final five back. Nobody's coming to the flat, brings him back. You can see the match right there, okay? Now, hey. They're throwing the ball down there. I don't consider that a, a hard deal by the linebackers. I think that's pretty easy. This is like the day before we played Clemson in the whatever, in the Chick-fil-A or the playoffs last year, and everybody's trying to make sure nobody got hurt. You know how that goes. It's the 14th week of the season. They're just trying to get through. <clears throat> okay, all right. We got another Tennessee deal right here. Okay. All right, so we're playing cone down here. We got the guy cone. All right, you can see this is easy, right? Okay, all right. So here we are. Now, you guys, you tell me, okay? If you were coaching this guy right here, number three right here, I mean, should we have this play played? I know we obviously don't because right, we got poor eyes, okay? We should have this play played on number three, all right? Everybody in this room, okay, if we went to play this technique on number two right here, I think everybody in this room, right, including Winslet, right, could play this technique right here, right? All right, so we're inside. Inside, the guy's vertical up the field. You got him, right? There should be nothing right here, okay? And I'd be darned if the quarterback ain't throwing it in over here where you, the dude's double covered, Okay. So this is why you play, these, play this coverage, is to take these inside breaking routes away. There we go. Here it is. So everybody's running back inside, right? There's nowhere to go with the ball. Okay, so we got the X doubled. Boom, right there. Take them back inside out. Nowhere to go with the ball. So this is why. So remember when I said if you were playing stump or stubby, Coach Spurrier was going to run a happy route, basically double slant by two and three. This takes that away, okay? If he wants to run, if you want to run uh, verticals with three by one, we're carrying them down the field. It takes it away, right? So this is why we have this coverage. Run fits don't change. We get to fit away from the back, period. That's our deal. Get to fit away from the back. Here we go. Let's see. We might get a... One thing that I want to tell you, though, why this is opened up right here, okay? Now... <clears throat> if there is speed, speed, when I say speed, I'm talking about wide receivers, okay? If there is speed at number three, we are not going to ask our inside linebacker. I don't even care if it's Rashawn Evans. We are not going to ask our inside linebackers to carry when there's speed at three, okay? All right? We, we still, we don't change the coverage on the outside, Okay? What we do is, is we tell the backside safety to poach, okay? He's going to poach to number three, okay? All right. We do decide if we want to take the linebacker and still let him play clip, okay? 
He plays Cliff out, but the only thing is, is does he carry? Uh, we, de we decide that each week, and sometimes that depends on who the quarterback is. Because one thing about it, when we start playing these man-match stuff, okay, and we're matching these people, and you can see there's not places to go with the ball, all right, we worried about this quarterback, right? Uh, these guys that have these quarterbacks, it can extend and create. If you can't control them with your four-down rush, sometimes we're trying to steal like zone eyes, right? So we decide on that. But when we poach, all we do is the backside safety makes it look just like he's playing cone. And if three's vertical, he poaches over there to him, right? That's it. That's all it is to it. Still got a good disguise. And, hey, we all know the corner's what now? Buys what? Now he's earning that scholarship, okay, uh, and that check that they give him each month, okay. So a kid from Georgia that comes to Tennessee, okay, uh, his check, he, of course he gets everything paid for, but he gets $8,000 a, a year stopping, and, that, and that's, that's on top of a pail. So, hell, they're making more money than most everybody in the building. Uh, but... He's got to earn his scholarship there. So I just want to go over that. That's not speed at three. That's just a tight end flexed out, but I don't know if he'll have it on there, and I want to make sure I went over because I don't want somebody to come out here and, and decide they're going to put Clip in in the spring and offense puts the best player they got at number three and runs down the middle of the field, and they're like, Pruitt's a damn idiot. Why are we doing that? So, All right, so this is good. People run these routes. Remember, look the star up here. All right, where's two going? He's going out. He goes out, go to number who? One. And it's like 100%, right? You know, two and three go out, one's going to come where? In, okay? So, I mean, I mean, and watch number five right here. This is what I love about this. I mean, I mean, really, guys? I mean, I mean, could not, I mean, he moved three yards. Moved three yards. He literally, I mean, that's all he moved. Just being efficient. Guy runs a wheel, ain't nothing to it. On the back side, so here, here we're playing Connie, right? So here's Connie. This is the same route that West Virginia ran against us. Pretty simple, right? One thing I'm going to guarantee you, all right, is this Mike linebacker right here? Because right, he knew, because I coached him. All right? Is when this sucker got short, what's my issues? Common sense, right? Common sense. Okay, I got an issue. Do I have a way to get out of it? Yeah, you do. Make a Connie call. All right, put the pressure on these guys. That's why we recruited them. I mean, pretty simple. Connie call, right? Should be right now. There it is. Now, you get a Connie call like lots of times. I, I'm, I think this is like when Dable was at Alabama as offensive coordinator. I don't know why this back ain't doing it, but lots of times he liked to run these sneaks right here. Okay, this is a big deal with the Patriots. And they like to take this back, stick him right here and follow him. If they do that, the corner's got to take him, right? That's his guy. X goes inside. All right, the backer's got the X. All right, you got the back. So you got to take him all the way back. And it was kind of interesting when the year I worked with him there at Alabama, he's at Buffalo now, but it was pretty interesting that I'm sitting there listening when he came and interviewed with Coach Saban. And... He goes through this whole deal that they do, and he's talking about progression of how they go through things. And, and they said with, with Brady that if they started over here, they never wanted to get no further back than to the ball. Okay? They never wanted to start over here and end up over here. Thinking, okay, I'm just listening, right? I'm just old high school coach. Uh, then Nick asked him, said, what about movements? He's talking about boots, nakeds, you know. He's like, well, we, we got them, but, you know, he said, Tom wasn't very good at them, so we didn't do them. I thought, okay, hmm. So we got the best quarterback probably in the history of ball, and you ain't going to let him go from, but from here to here, and you ain't going to do this because he, he's not good at them, you know. So I'm thinking, okay, that's pretty damn good coaching. You know, really, you know, common sense, right? So... And here they are again in the, in the deal. They keep changing coaches. They just don't change quarterbacks. You know, all these other players, you know, they keep changing. I saw a thing on Twitter yesterday where when the Patriots and Brady won the first Super Bowl, what was the ages? Did y'all see that? What was the ages of all the skilled players? Sonny Michelle was six years old. 
You know, the oldest guy was Edelman. He was 15 when they won their first Super Bowl. It's crazy. <clears throat> okay. All right, so this posse, all posse is, guys, is their speed at three, right? Remember when I said their speed at three? All right, so for us, when we put these things on the board, the blues are running backs, the reds are wide receivers, and the wise are the tight ends are green. So that's speed at three. So posse, that's the check. Instead of clip, hey, check, poach, we just say posse. He knows he's poaching the threes, all there is to it. It's probably one I knew it's Ohio State. Hadn't showed up since Ohio State in 14. So I don't even have to show it to you. Here's one at practice. Oh, this is good. Okay. So we didn't go over bunches out of stump. <clears throat> See, here we go. You talk about these under 30 guys in coaching, right? So if he was going to show a bunch and versus clip, he should have showed a bunch versus stubby and stump, right? Because I'm going to have everybody damn confused when y'all walk out of here. All right. So now... We're playing, we're playing clip, right? So let's go back. Corner's got the what? It's got the flats, okay? Star's got two up and in. Money's got three up and in. Well, we got a three-man bunch. What are we going to do? Well, we call sort, okay? We call sort. When we're playing clip, this is the way we play it. Corner's got the flats, okay? Safety's got the half, all right? Those two guys, they sort two and three, okay? So the best way to do it, all right, <clears throat> three's going to the what? Going to the flat. Right now, you can see these two guys sorting. All right, so three goes to the flat. I know I'm going to one. I'm go I got this guy. It's pretty simple. What about if three came inside? Then you got to take him. You got the next one inside. We got a flat player, right? I mean, it's just a way to play the patterns. You can see there's nowhere to go with the ball. <clears throat> if you notice right here, these guys made what? Made a Connie call. This corner's got to go to the who? The back. We ain't got nobody on the back because the corner ain't doing what he's supposed to do. He made a Connie call. Look, he made it right there. All right, there it comes. Backer knows it. He's inside. You got to go match the back. We ain't got nobody on the back. Safety's staying high. All right, stud. Okay, so <clears throat> stud is a way that we play in three by one, and this really is kind of our, our quarter, quarter, half family. How much time I got, Don? What time is it? I, I know if you just give me the time, I okay, I can do the math. All right. Stud. All right, stud for us, okay? All right, we're playing quarter, quarter, half. I'm gonna go fast here. All right, on the weak side, on the weak side, we play cover two. Weak side, we play cover two. Okay? So we've been playing doubles over there, right? So on the weak side, we're gonna play cover two. All right. Uh, so now the Mike linebacker, okay? All right, he, 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 really, he really don't have four and first crosser. All right, we, we can play where we read if it's four strong load. So the, the, the weak side backer over there on the weak side, he really drops to the vertical hook, okay, all right, which is 10 yards deep, uh, the hash to two yards outside the hash, okay? Does that make sense? All right, now we will do some things. The reason that says that, if it goes four strong load, the back goes strong, right? <clears throat> We'll tell our corner on the back side, this is just, everybody listen to me now. We're playing cover two, right? So the corner's got the flats, right? Okay. But we will also tell this corner and this weak side linebacker uh, that we will read the back. If the back goes strong, he goes to the trips, well, why in the hell do we need a guy sitting out here in the flats? You know? Uh, we don't need a guy sitting over there. So we tell him to do what? He, we always play this from all from like, five yards, so if the back goes strong away from us, we'll just turn and play two-man on the, on the receiver. And we don't always do that, but we can. Does that make sense? Because lots of times, people remember the Mike Bobo play. Here it comes right here. You're playing halves over there. He fakes the ball right there. The, the weak side backer takes it. Corner's playing in the flats. There he goes to the RPO on the slant right there. Okay? All right. So if they're doing that, you're playing against Colorado State right now, and they're doing that, you want to play this coverage, and the back goes across, you want to play it with, with what we call cut dog. Okay, corner gets inside, uh, we play cut dog. You don't have to do it. On the strong side, guys, <clears throat> we, play, we play stud, okay, um, the, uh, the, the money backer. His rule is this. You're dropping to the middle of the field 12 yards deep. 
middle of the field, 12 yards deep right now. All right, when it's passed, bam, get there. Open right now, get there. Middle of the field, 12 yards deep. Okay, if three is vertical, you're going to carry him. If three is vertical, you're going to carry him. Okay, all right. Now, there's, there's, there's some buts in here. But if one and two are short, when I say short, they ain't running vertical. All right, if they're short, don't carry him. There ain't no reason to. Okay, because we got a safety back there. Okay, but the, the best way to do it is you get there. And this is, this is a good change up. Kirby's playing a lot of this right now. Uh, and, and this isn't something that, that we did a lot at, at Alabama. He's kind of evolved in it, and he's using this coverage a lot in his, in his odd defense. Okay, uh, it's been good for him. So uh, drop 12 yards deep, middle of the field, okay, um, three's vertical, you got him, unless one and two are both short. You can see that. All right, now, <clears throat> corner, star, all right. <clears throat> I'm going to go with the star. Star, you're going to line up, apex, right? Just split the difference between two and three, okay? Inside foot up, like this, ball's inside. All right, we're playing out there, we're playing the old read coverage, okay? If, if two's vertical, it's quarters. If two goes to the flat, it turns into cover two. Does that make sense? That's what we're doing there. Okay, so he knows if two's vertical, he's just got, he's got first to the flat, right? Okay, if two goes to the flat, then he knows that he, he sloughs off uh, in the curl, right? Right there in the seam curl because if two goes to the flat, it's turned into cover two. Don't take nobody to the flat, all right? Now, he also knows if they run the drive route and the back's weak, he takes the drive route back. He has to, right? Okay, has to. All right, because, um, well, we, we, we decide each game if we're going to take him back or not because we're playing zone in this deal. We, sometimes on the weak side, we can say we're not going to take it back. All right, most of the time we do because guys whipping in and whipping out and all that, but uh, you don't have to. All right, now, the safety, okay? The safety, he plays old what? Old, old, old read coverage, right? He's reading who? He's reading two. Okay, two's vertical, he's got him. All right, if, if, if two goes to the flat, he's in a half, right? Turns into cover two. So <clears throat> the reason we think that we can get away with this coverage with our, with our linebacker there is, our, our middle linebacker, is because you got a half on the backside, right? So you got a half safety back over there, okay? And if two goes to the flat, you got a half on the front side, so it really turns into Tampa two. All right, but it's a way to get quarter, quarter, halves with it right here. So we think it's a good way, okay? These teams that like to do this, remember the route that people are doing this, two goes out and three goes out, and they're trying to throw the ball right there? This is a good way to take this away, okay? Uh, it's also a good way, lots of times on third down, uh, because we play so much man match, people run one and two vertical, and they put speed at three, and three runs like an option route wherever the sticks are at. It gives us a way to have somebody inside and outside the option with zone eyes. So, uh, and it gives us cover two on the back side. Uh, this ought to be a wonderful look right here. There's no telling what the hell we're about to see. Okay, so one thing that I like to do when I play clamp out here and we read this guy is I like to do it from, from I call it creep alignment. So I want to show that we're going to be up here like we're going to play press, and then I want to creep out, all right, just so people don't know. Because if we go, because yeah, I think now most of the time, where do we play? We play like this, right? So if we ever line up like I used to when I coached at Hoover and we played this coverage, we would line up, you know, eight yards off so we could read two, right? If they know we're doing that now, they know what we're playing because we don't hardly ever do that. So it was just something that I started doing at, at Georgia is – I just started creeping it out, and you got to be in positions, right, so you, can, so you can read two to the flat. One thing about the corner that I don't want to do is when two comes to the flat, I don't want this guy to jump down on it. When two goes to the flat, all right, we know we're playing cover two, okay, but I, I just, I just kind of want to be soft with it and react to the ball. Just don't set it down and let them throw the ball over your head and put the pressure on the safety. You know, so... No, has the film kept rolling? All right, see what we got here. All right, so, hey, right here, we're good. All right, you can see this guy. He's carrying him. I, I like the way this guy's doing. 
He drops to the middle of the field. Three's vertical. He's matching it. I think it's good versus this route right here, too. Okay? Uh, it's sort of be a pretty good route. People running verticals. It's good change of pace over here. Playing cover two up top. All right, this guy's too wide. I don't know why he's that wide. Here we go. Now, one thing that I'm going to say right now, this safety, okay? If you're going to play this read coverage with a field safety, his ass has to be 14 yards from the ball when the ball's turned over. All right? These guys at Tennessee that play safety for me have no respect for the deep part of the field. It's the damnedest thing i ever seen. You would think that, man, that... that we were like some ball playing Jesse's, right? We just all up in there. I mean, it don't even make sense. We don't, we don't have a lot of confidence, but then yet we put ourselves at 10 yards from the line of scrimmage when we're playing clamp. Whew, I got to do a better job. All right, but you can see right here. All right, maybe he is 14 yards. All right. But I know one thing. You better be pedaling fast. You can't just be sitting there. This guy goes to the flat. He can't guard this guy over the top. Now, playing clamp, what do you do when you play read two? This guy's got to play smash rule. Hey, and this is another thing right here, okay? This is a route right here. They're trying to get this guy to go out to throw the ball off this guy. I think this is a good job by this guy pushing into the guy. I would like to see him drop first. How about this linebacker right here? We all know we're playing cover two, right? He thinks he's playing man-to-man. -man. Kiss my ass. Here we go. So this guy drops. All right. If this guy would get deeper, this is a good look. All right. This guy, right now, two's out. He should drop right in this on my green dot right there. All right. This corner. This is not what you want the corner to do. All right. The corner does what? Break on the near shoulder of the quarterback. He's running the wrong way. You know, one of the things that I like to do as a DB coach, and I do it all the time, and it, it's, really, it's really a sobering information for these guys that think that they're really good players. And, I, and I'm trying to build their confidence, but they, you also got to be damn realistic too. Uh, is one of the things that, that I do is, is when the ball is released from the quarterback's hand, so we can freeze the ball, right? So let's look right here on this one right here. The ball is, it's out. It's out right there, right? So, all I'm going to do is it's right there. So right now, everybody that's a defender that's supposed to be playing with zone eyes, right? All right, you look where you're at. So let's look at this guy. He's playing with zone eyes. Everybody sees where he's at. He's on the 25-yard line, four yards outside the hash. Here this guy is. He's on the 22-yard line. Here's this corner right here. He's on the eight-yard line. So the ball's out. These three guys are playing with zone eyes. All right, there's the ball. Okay, well, this corner went from the eight-yard line, okay, to the damn four-yard line. So he's actually running away from the damn ball, okay, all right, with zone eyes. All right, this guy, ball's out right now. He's here. All right, he might have broke what? He might have gained one yard, okay, one yard. All right, it's the whole key to being a great, a great uh, team in the secondary that can play with zone eyes is you look, if for every 10 yards, excuse me, every um, 10 yards that the ball is thrown, every 10 yards that the ball is thrown, you're supposed to be able to break one-third the distance, okay? So if it's, if it's thrown 30 yards, okay, so you, you, should, you should be able to break nine yards, right? Uh, so that's one of the things that, that you show them and these guys understand, okay, <clears throat> I, I'm, I'm not being productive as a defender. So here we go. I'm, I'm getting in stuff. It don't even matter. All right, so right here, two to the flat. This is a little better by this guy. Dropping the seam. This guy should be higher. Uh, playing cover two on the backside. As you can see, this coverage uh, is not as tight, probably, uh, as some of the other ones. Sail pattern. This is a tough one. All right, let's see, what, uh, let's see what other coverages we got here. Palms, yeah, I like this one, okay? Palms. All right, now, we're talking about stress, okay? So 
I'm on, on the weak side in palms, okay? We're coning the X. We're coning him, okay? It's Coner Connie over here on the X, right? We've got it, all right? <clears throat> on one and two to the field, one and two to the field, we're playing clamp coverage, which is read, it, what we call read, it's read two, okay? So two's vertical, we're playing quarters. Two goes to the flat, turns into cover two, all right? Now, now we put all the pressure on this linebacker, all right? You notice it says carry number three, all right, he got number three all over. Three goes out, three goes back, three goes vertical, you got him, okay? So you remember when I said earlier when the back's over there, you got to be able to go action to coverage, one guard play pass, tight ends running vertical down the field. Dan Mullen does this a lot in this look, fakes it because he runs a lot of actions that way. All right, you got to go action to coverage. You got to be able to carry this guy down the field, okay? If you got an inside backer that can do this and play this way, this is a really good coverage, good alternative. Okay, uh, and, it, and, it, and it's a good change up. So we'll look at a couple of these. I don't know how many of these we got on here. Okay, like it in the red area, right? <clears throat> well, it'd help if we weren't playing with 10 men. That's why I put four dudes up here for the first teaching clip. Get everybody confused. All right, so right here. Here we go. All right, so right now, these guys are playing palms. Okay, so we're playing read two. We're fixing to get beat on a touchdown out here. All right, two's back. He's there. He's got all of one, right? Two didn't come to flat all of one. He's going to get beat on a slow go. But this is the guy I want you to see. He's playing three down the middle. We're doubling on the back side. I mean, really right here, except for this right here, you got to get beat on the slow go. Guy makes a good throw, good catch. Maybe Marlon's got his eyes in the wrong spot. <clears throat> it's a good alternative way to play. All right, so that must have been the only one he put on there. All right, so one of the, uh, is it 10.05, Don? 10, 20. All right. Am I going over Craig? Where's Craig at? I guess. I can just keep going. He told me an hour and 15 minutes. All right. So one of the things that, that, um, that the first thing we're going to define with defensive backs is we got to know where the dividers are for us. Okay. When I say dividers, I'm talking for the, uh, for the corners. Okay. So if the ball's in the middle of the field for us, the dividers – are one yard from the top of the numbers, okay? They've got to know where the dividers are at. So I was speaking in, uh, in College Station a couple of years ago. I, I was actually coaching at Georgia then. And uh, so I'm going over these dividers, and I put them up. I probably got them on the tape here. Uh, and I, one of the coaches in the crowd asked me, he said, Coach, have you ever... Because no, we don't huddle up no more, right? Nobody huddles up on defense or offense. So... He asked me, he said, Do you, have you ever told your corners to go stand? As soon as the play's over with, look to where the ball's at and go stand on the divider right then. Uh, have, you, have you told them to do that? And I'm sitting there thinking, no, I've never told them to do that. But that's a heck of an idea. So we've started doing that is as soon as the play's over with, uh, and I'm just saying I'm the field corner. Okay, and the ball's, um, here's our sideline over here. So he sees where the ball's at. The ball's in the middle of the field. All right, then I'm going to go stand one yard from the top of the numbers. All right, and I'm going to wait till they, I'm, obviously I'm getting their call, but I'm going to stand there and I'm going to wait till they line up. Now I know if the wide receiver's inside the divider or outside the divider. All right, if the ball's on the other hash, for us, we split the difference between the hash and the numbers. So he goes and lines up on his divider, okay, uh, and he's not going to move. Uh, if the ball's into the boundary, okay, the divider moves. It goes from one yard from top of the numbers to the middle of the numbers. All right? And that's what we do. So the first thing that we teach is where's the dividers for the corners. All right? And when, we, that, when you say, okay, where do you huddle? That's where you huddle. Okay? So I can look out there and I can see if this guy knows where his divider's at. All right, all right guys, I know this is the, the end of my deal here. All right? Sincerely, okay, all right, when Tennessee was good, okay, all right, it made the rest of the SEC good, okay, all right, and when Tennessee was good, it was because the people that they recruited out of the state of Georgia, okay, um, 
I want to invite everybody, y'all come watch us practice in the spring. All right, come meet with us, shoot me a text. All right, whatever, whatever you need to do, we will be accessible to everybody that we can. Okay, so uh, thank you, and uh, hope I see you up there this spring.